All right, well today we're gonna be uh, taking a tour of one of the racks in this alpha cluster that I have recently obtained. It used to be in Houston at the ISC, somehow a VA related operation. It's an alpha cluster, four nodes. One, two, three, and four. Each rack on the front side has three SCSI disk enclosures. A tape drive. Two CPUs. One of the racks has a UPS. Today we'll be focusing on Alpha Cabinet A. Nice little digital logo there. Uh, I would uh, take the full tour of uh, A and B, but I don't have enough power in this room to turn them both on without tripping a circuit breaker. So today we'll just focus on A. So in this top for you setup here, we got a SCSI rack a bunch of RZ26 and RZ28 SCSI drives. Kind of small, but nice. More of them. Tape drive. TZ867. This is a uh, magazine type uh, tape jukebox. So, real useful for unattended backups and the such like. It's a SCSI device, can do multiple tapes, changes them in and out as needed, either manually or under system control. More storage. The CPUs, they are DEC 2000 AXP systems from digital, obviously pre-98. They've got the old uh, caddy style CD-ROM drives. 2.8 meg uh, floppy drives, don't see those too much anymore. Here we have a couple of UPSs. They're complaining because the batteries are no good. Not too surprising considering this system had not been powered on since about 2002 until I got it here. Now over on the left side of the rack we have an LA75 printer dot matrix, 9 pin, pretty rugged and reliable, and a VT510 terminal, kind of like a VT320 on steroids, I suppose. The back of the racks with the ventilation holes. Now, I will open up the rack. Here we have more disk, more disk, back of that massive tape drive, more disk. This guy right here is an FDDI concentrator, fiber distributed data interface, power distribution unit under these uh, MMJ cables. Back of the CPUs, can't see them too well, but they're connected with uh, ThinNet for Ethernet connectivity, and there's three SCSI cables coming out of three host adapters in each system. We move this lamp here. Now the other rack, only thing I'm going to point out here is the only thing different. It's this unit here, some kind of uh, ThinNet based I don't know, can't really be a concentrator, but it's something. We'll find that out eventually. Part number DMPR-AA. Okay, now we're going to go around to the side once I get these racks closed up. Now we'll power on these systems. 
For some reason, 7A1 won't come up without 7A2 being on. So I'll power both of them on, even though 7A1 is the only one I've been able to get into console port-wise. Don't know exactly why. So 7A2. And now, 7A1. Got some nice power lights. Turn on the terminal here. Self test, okay. Now, just waiting for it to come up. Here we go. Self test. The SRM is digital's firmware for alphas when you're running VMS. If you choose to run Windows NT on one of these alphas, you have to run the ARC console, ARC. Memory check takes a bit of time here. So we can see we've got CPU, memory, I think that's NVRAM, not quite sure, some other stuff. Three SCSI host adapters and the FDDI network connection. Now, in the next video, we'll show the boot up of the system into OpenVMS and some of the applications installed on that system. Alright.